Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you don't know, my name is Delane and I am really, really excited about today's video. This is something that I am super passionate about. If you know me at all in real life, you know this to be true. So over the course of the last few weeks, I've been talking to one of my friends, her name is Krista, and she homeschools all four of her kids and she has since they started school. So we were just discussing different things and different activities and really fun things that you can do. And it just got me to thinking. I've taught before. I've taught preschool. I've subbed in elementary schools. I've done things like that for so long, for a very long time. I love activities that are for learning, but that also are really fun. So sometimes kids don't even know that they're learning. It just makes the environment so exciting, so fun. So as I was saying, my friend Krista and I were discussing all of this. And by the way, if you want to go check her out, she has a blog and I will put the link for that down below. So if you need some encouragement, something like that, definitely go check it out because she posts frequently and is always very encouraging and very kind and I love reading it. So if you need that, go down below and check it out. So I went shopping. Every time I've gone to the Dollar Tree, I have come home with different things. I cannot even explain to you all of the things I keep finding there. So first, if you have a younger child and you're looking for easy and cheap activities for them, that is definitely the place to go because you can buy so many different things for so cheap and use them for so many different activities. So if I were to have a homeschool day or a day in a classroom, the very first thing that I would do would be morning baskets. So this is something that I think a lot of people know about that a lot of people implement in their classrooms, in their homeschooling classrooms, things like that. So a morning basket can consist of a lot of different things. I personally, depending on the age, would maybe put one or two books in there, maybe an activity book. You could do a devotional, like I was talking about my friend Krista. Her kids now have morning baskets and I believe all of them have a devotional. It also would be fun to put maybe something that you're not necessarily gonna use for the school day, but is a fun learning activity. Something that I found that I would definitely put in a morning basket is this adorable little draw and fill in the word story. So you have different areas to write in words, things like that, and then you get to draw a picture of it. And the nice thing is that this is dry erase, so easy to clean, quick, and they can do it as many times as they want. So that would be something I would add along with just an easy to read book if it was a preschool or something they can look at, maybe a sticker activity book, things like that to where they can just start their day and that's how they know that they start their day every day. Then I would go into this awesome felt weather board. This right here, I would start my day off with something like this felt weather chart. And this was actually a target for $5. And you can see it up close here. It has different um, felt pieces, the hot, cold, winter, spring, summer, mild. And then it also has an arrow to go down on the temperature and things like that. This is such a fun way to start out a day of just going over, okay, is it hot? Is it cold? Is it mild? And for $5, honestly, amazing. So after doing morning baskets, weather, I would probably do something that would get them up and moving. And that's when I would pull out this. This is for food. However, you can use it for so many different activities other than food. One would be with these pom-poms that I got. So you take the pom-poms, there's white, there's colored, and you kind of mix them all around. You put them maybe on a table, on the floor, wherever you want, and then you give them tweezers, tongs, any of those things, and have them pick up different colors and sort them into the different spots on the tray. So I got these tongs right here because they were a four pack for a dollar. They have different things, but I figured four for a dollar, Jensen, not right now, he can't do it yet, but those will be the best because they're larger. But as they get older, you can do smaller and smaller, and I would even go as small as tweezers because that is 
so good for fine motor skills. So that's a very fun activity. You don't have to use pom-poms, really you could use anything. You could use the tray and you could say, go find six small red items in the house. Have them bring the red items here. Go find this or go find that. And that is really fun. Another fun thing for fall is coming up is I saw at the Dollar Tree, they had different colored leaves. So you could buy those, bring them home, hide them around your house and have your kids go find all the leaves and then bring them to the table and separate them by color into each one of these. The possibilities for this are, they're pretty much endless. You could do this with so many different things. So this is a very good find in my opinion. So that's already kind of a lot of things. I definitely recommend breaking up a day, doing snack, doing, you know, some outdoor activity, run around, go play some games, play quietly by themselves, any of those things, whether you are at school, they do that, or if you're homeschooling. I think that it's really important for kids to be able to have time to be active and have free play at a young age. Then I would come back and I would do some fun book work like this. So some other things that I picked up at the Dollar Tree were these fun little people books. These ones are ages four to six and there's colors and shapes, numbers, the alphabet, all of those. And then I have one ages three plus, which is basic concepts. So I'm just gonna go through and kind of show you a few things in each one. So those things are just really good for book work. After the book work, once again, you probably want to do something a little bit more active or exciting. I found it five below. This cute little sand bucket with some different shovels. I personally would use these or items like this for maybe sensory bins. And my plan when Jensen is old enough is to have probably one sensory bin a day, maybe two just as an option. So for this right here, I might would color rice, I would do something like that, and then put it in a big yet thin tote. Put that in and then put these in, and then maybe when they're old enough where they're not gonna obviously be eating these things, some small dinosaurs, small animals, things like that, and let them scoop them and just play however they would with it. It doesn't matter, it's for fun, but also they're learning different skills. Another really fun thing that I found at the Dollar Tree, and they have this a lot, these are dry erase writing boards. And this would be just a fun independent activity for your kids to work on letters, things like that, just to work on writing in the line. So I for sure recommend picking one of these up if you have kids, you know, around this age. But working with kids, they love dry erase things. It is just the most exciting. And to go along with that, I just picked up some dry erase pens. To go along with some more independent play, I got these fun little, almost like waffle puzzle things. And um, it has the alphabet on it. They hook together and it goes through the whole entire alphabet. And these are fun. This is something that either I would do to work on letters, saying things like find the A, where's the A at? or find the octopus, or let's put all these together, see how many we can do at one time. Let's find the whole alphabet and do that. These are just really fun. These were at Target, they were only $3, and I grabbed these because I'd never seen them before and I want them for later with Jensen. After doing different activities like that, I would either go to maybe getting a big poster board and putting numbers on it and going through numbers and working on skip counting, like two, four, six, or I would do something maybe with shapes. So something that would be very fun to do is getting maybe some craft paper and they have rolls of that at the Dollar Tree that you could just sit on maybe a longer table or even a round table like I have and drawing a circle, square, rectangle, triangle, different shapes like that and having your kids go find different things in the house that are those shapes and have them bring them and put them in piles. And that once again is just something exciting. They can go get it, they can go do that. And 
it's also very inexpensive and easy, but it gets them moving and their brains working. Another fun thing that is a game, but also helps with a lot of different areas is bingo. I just picked this car one up because I had never seen a car one before and I really wanted it for future and this was at the Dollar Tree. I suggest bingo for so many different reasons. Sometimes you can have number bingo, shape bingo, letter bingo. All of those are amazing because it's helping them recognize numbers, shapes, letters, any of that stuff. But it's also having them learn how to you know, mark things off or what does bingo actually mean? What does a line mean? Do we have how many across? Let's count. These are all activities just to make them learn things, but also to have fun and enjoy stuff. Another fun thing that I found was this chalkboard clock. And this is something that I would probably do periodically, not always, not every day. It's really fun because you can write in the times. It was only $3 at Target. To go along with that, I also found this telling time flashcard set and that was at target for a dollar so i think that that is awesome i think that it's very important for kids to learn how to tell time i know that we live in a day and age where everything is digital but this is a skill that they really do need to learn and this makes it more fun and flashcards make everything just a little bit easier for most kids those are just some things that for a routine day and to keep continuity throughout the day, that's what I would do. I would also throw in different breaks. I would have time for them, like I said, to go outside, to run, to play. And I would also give them time for us maybe to read a book together or do something that's a little bit more quiet and sit together and do. So I'm just gonna pan over a few things that I found at the Dollar Tree. Like here are some fun dice that you can write on yourself. So you could do things like use them for exercise, roll it and we're gonna do, you know, 10 jumping jacks or we're gonna do five sit-ups or things like that. Or you can use them for numbers. You can make them like regular dice. There's also these very fun stickers. I am really about positive reinforcement. Kids love attention and they love attention whether it's negative or positive most of the time. And so if we can turn it around and be really encouraging when they're doing something good and not overlook it, I think that that makes them continue to want to do better. And so I love stickers, I love sticker charts because I love when they have a visual aid of seeing that they did something right it's exciting and it's fun. So I would probably have a chart with their name and different things beside it. And maybe if they got so many stickers throughout the week or the month or however you wanna do it, you can have some different prizes, like maybe from the Dollar Tree. There's a lot of different things at the Dollar Tree where they have multiple packs of one thing and you can make you know different prize boxes. So if at the end of the week, you know they have five stickers, they can pick one prize from this box or if they wanna save up for the whole month, they can pick one prize from this box. I recognize that that's not feasible for everyone and everybody doesn't like to do things that way, but that's just something that I think is fun and encouraging for a lot of different reasons. So those are just some quick and easy ideas in regards to that. But the one thing that over the years that I have learned with teaching is if you're excited about it, they usually tend to be more excited about it. And that means that if you want them to learn a sight word or a letter or a shape or anything like that, make it a big deal. When you make something a big deal, it seems like a big deal. So, you know, tell them a story, something like, I was outside and I saw something that was really big out there and it was green and it had leaves and it started with the letter T, 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 T. What was it? Can you guess what I found? Do you know what it was that was outside? I realize that's a very basic example, but when you get excited, they get exciting and learning should be exciting. This is something that I'm really excited about. I would love to make more videos about this. You wanna see more ideas or you want different examples of things like that, please let me know and make sure to like and subscribe so that if I do make more, 
you will know and you will be able to see them. So I hope you guys have a wonderfully blessed day and I will see you in the next one. Bye.